Kia ora everyone. Since we announced the cost share information for Ian Bovis response last night, there's naturally been a lot of interest from farmers. I've also had a request to put together a short video that might help explain how we got to this point. So back in late May this year, the government, along with industry, made the decision to embark on an eradication program for Embovis in New Zealand. A total estimated cost of 870 million over 10 years. Two thirds of that cost was to be covered by the government and the other third by industry. So the boards of Dairy and Z and Beef and Lamb engaged an independent panel to build a model to help make a recommendation on what that cost share should be. And both boards agreed essentially to abide by the recommendation that came out of that process. A lot of robust discussions and engagement, putting inputs towards the panel so they could build this model during the last couple of months. They, as you may know, have made a recommendation that the cost be shared 94% for dairy and 6% for beef. Now every dairy farmer that I've spoken to since uh, struggles to get their head around that. It doesn't quite stack up and I think that's because most people tend to equate uh, the impact of the response with the number of herds that are infected. But what the panel actually did was they took the farm gate returns from both the dairy sector and from the beef sector. And the ratio is roughly a little over four to one. So a little over 80% of farm gate returns come from dairy and the balance a little under 20% to the beef sector. So they took these farm gate returns as, as a starting point. And then they applied risk factors to the classes of stock that we run in both the dairy sector and the beef sector. And they concluded that from technical advice that the risk to dairy stock generally was much higher than to beef stock. The risk of becoming infected, the risk of showing clinical uh, impacts if you like of the disease if they're infected. Um, and also of course um, the risk of becoming infected relates to the fact that dairy animals are in the herd for much, much longer. Many cows last well over 10 years. Whereas beef animals that are going to slaughter typically no more than two years. So they are not uh, exposed, if you like, potentially to disease as long. So these factors were all weighted, if you like, on that farm gate returns. And by putting those risk factors in, the panel then lifted the ratios, if you like and widen that gap between the dairy sector and the beef sector. And that's how, if you like, around 80-20 became 94-6. Now, being straight up with your dairy and Z was disappointed with this outcome. We had argued our case strongly to the panel that they need to consider uh, benefits that would come from an eradication program to both sectors uh, from avoiding costs. As many know, our sectors are very, very closely linked together, very much intertwined. You've got service balls from the beef sector going into the end of mating for, for on dairy herds. Uh, you also have grazing being undertaken by dry stock farmers of dairy cows during the winter and heifers during other times. You've also got a lot of bull beef that uh, leave the dairy sector and into the beef industry. So, so an impact on, say, the dairy sector can have a large impact potentially on the beef sector as well. And that was the essence behind our case um, to take those considerations into account. The panel found it difficult to put numbers on those. We're talking about scenarios that haven't happened and that's why they ended up uh, going with this, uh, if you like, revenue at risk model uh, instead. And that took us to the 94.6. So moving forward, we now need to move on and we will be coming out to farmers in the new year, which is very soon, to talk uh, about how a levy might work, the time period under which we could pay that off and get your feedback on that. Looking at the Embovis response overall, uh, look, we're seeing really encouraging progress here. We're, we're not there yet, but at this point in time, um, we're making great progress. We need to acknowledge that this has been incredibly tough on uh, many farmers out there that have been affected, and we need to acknowledge the animals have been involved as well. We also need to acknowledge the contribution from the government. Uh, as I said earlier, they're putting two thirds of the response costs into this. And I think that's a really positive nod towards dairy and beef uh, industries in our country, which is much appreciated. So I hope that's cleared things up for you. Uh, and 
If you have any other further questions, then do get in touch with us. Uh, you can either do that at info at dairynz.co.nz or you can also call our 0800 number at 0800 4 dairynz Thanks for your time.